so sky If I die, I hope I'm no random guy Someone out there they will say He is mine, he is mine what is going on guys? Jeff and I are just out for a little bit of a walk and I'm actually back in Florida. I Last time you saw me, I was in Canada, but I'm back in Florida. I had my graduation. Stephanie Buttermore, you included my doctor for Trisha on So I had my hooding and my graduation ceremony last Saturday. I'm actually moving from Tampa to Jacksonville, so I'm really excited about our new place, so stay tuned for that. Today I wanted to show you what I typically eat when I'm in a cut. It's gonna be a full day of eating on a cut. But I wanna give a huge shout out to Squarespace for supporting this video. If you don't know, Squarespace is an all-in-one website creator platform that allows you to custom create your own personalized website or your own online store. So if you're interested, check out the first link in the description box below. Jeff and I are going to walk back to the apartment and I'll catch up with you at meal one. Mm. It is about 2.45. Jeff and I are back from our walk. I'm about to have meal one and I'm going to make some barbecue chicken pizzas and they're really obviously macro friendly. Like I said, it's almost three o'clock and I'm only having my first meal. So if you watch my first full day of eating and if you haven't, I'll link it down below so you can go ahead and watch it. I explain a little bit more in detail about why I wait so long to eat. I do have a very big appetite. I find that waiting until later in the day until I feel really hungry to consolidate all of my meals in a shorter time frame. I have the bulk of my food around my training which happens to be later in the day. So I will have larger meals that make me feel more satisfied and I'll have them all consolidated in a shorter time frame. Uh, this is how I tame my hunger. For this you're going to need these Joseph's pita, which I find at Publix, which is a local grocer here. I know that Walmart also sells them and they're really, really, really great on macros. I'm sure you've seen these before. It has per pita, two fat, nine carb, six protein. Also going to be using fat-free mozzarella. And as a sauce, instead of pizza sauce, I'm going to use this sugar-free hickory barbecue sauce. Chicken cooked up here, they're just like cut up and cubed in small pieces. Then I'm gonna throw it in the oven, and that's it. Yummy, macro-friendly pizza. and then I topped it with some cheese. And these are gonna go into the oven. So in case you're wondering why I'm cutting right now, I'm actually still considering another food challenge. Like this video if you want me to do a food challenge. I'm considering doing another one, so I just wanna keep my hunger high and uh, potentially be doing another food challenge. Also, I don't track my macros. I just kind of uh, make sure that I have between 100 and 120 grams of protein a day. My carbs and fat will vary day to day. I generally just eat intuitively, so right now I just make sure I hit my protein and I've been tracking long enough to know when I'm in a deficit or not. Those look delicious. This is Jeff's barbecue chicken pizza. <laughs> Jeff gets to eat real pizza. <laughs> pizza cutter. First meal. Struggle. Uh, so I'm having a Dr. Pepper with this. I get a napkin. So a little bit of an update. I actually went in to go see my PI yesterday. I have, this is whole and all part of the submission process of submitting a paper. Mm, this is really good. Part of the whole publication process is that sometimes you get the paper back after the reviewers have taken a look at it and they have a lot of edits or modifications that they want you to make to the paper. But you have to take their criticism with a grain of salt. That's what will make the paper better. And one of the papers that I recently submitted came back from the reviewers and they're happy to publish the paper. The paper was accepted but one of the reviewers really kind of let me have it and wrote like an essay of all the things that he would like me to change. And for the most part, nothing had to be changed at the bench. So no experiments really needed to be added, just changing the way that I worded things and he thought my discussion was too long. Even though I've graduated, I'm completely graduated and I've defended, I'm still under contract with the university until August 31st. And what that means is that I still technically work for the university, so we're trying to publish as many papers as we can with my data 
before I leave. You don't want to have data unpublished. You don't really want to leave data unpublished because it's kind of, it's more or less an ethical reason because you have this information that you've discovered and you want to share it with the scientific community because then from there, no one else has to repeat what you've already done and already found out or they can build on top of it. And for the fact that you can also get more publications out of the hard work that you put in at the bench, this is a paper that's going to go to the Journal of Ovarian Cancer Research. I will also have to write a rebuttal letter. So I have to address every point that they either disliked or disagreed with or they want us to change. Let's go to the gym so we're gonna have our pre-workout meal. I'm actually just making Jeff uh, some leftover Penang. If you haven't watched my last full day of eating, then you should because I actually, um, ow, this is so hot, oh my God. I actually make this in that full day of eating. So if you wanna know how to make a macro-friendly chicken Penang, which is a traditional Thai dish, mm. you should go watch that video. Lunch, and then I'm gonna make myself something to eat as well, so after this. Mmm, so good. For my pre-workout meal, I'm not gonna do something too heavy before I work out, so I'm not super full. Kale salad blend, and I topped it with some of the chicken that I made earlier, and then I actually made the salad dressing for it, and you have to try it, so don't knock it until you try it, but it's a mixture of my favorite sriracha sauce, mustard, and then a little bit of sweetener, so it's like a sweet and spicy, like, French dressing, I think is a good description of it. You should try it, it's really good. I invented it, mm. but I'm gonna have this. And another trick that I do is that I eat a lot of my food with chopsticks, and that's because it makes me eat a little bit slower so I don't inhale all of my food. <laughs> I'm gonna have this and then we're gonna go train. Then when we come back, I will have something with more carbs for post-workout and protein. Mm. What are you training? Um, I'm gonna do a little bit of lower body and then some shoulders. Damn, shoulders. looking lean. Holy. Can you see the shoulder again? Whew. This cuts, man. Damn. Right now, Jeff and I are actually watching a course yeah. on photography right now from The Great Courses Plus because we want to be better at taking pictures. We're YouTubers and we film stuff, but we don't know very much about cameras and we don't know very much about filming and taking pictures. So we're trying to learn fundamentals of photography. We are watching this. So, so we're going to eat, watch this while we eat, and then we're going to go train. Drinking pre-workout. Jeff is sponsored by PE, so I have Prolific and one scoop of high volume. Cheers. <laughs> it's five o'clock, by the way, because I want something sweet. I'm gonna have some fruits. Berries are actually really good. You can have high volume of them and not a lot of carbs. I'm gonna have a couple blueberries. Mmm, they are good. And then we're gonna go train. Wait, wait, wait. Ready? Yeah. Nice. Ready for level two? Oh, there's more? Yeah, yeah, there's five levels. I are actually going to see Brockhampton live in Toronto. <laughs> These niggas take me for granted. What would happen if I finish? Better hunted, they panic. My shooters only speak Spanish. Keep my heart with my dogs. Keep my car in the yard. There's boxes everywhere because like I said, I am moving so I'm packing. I'm sure you understand I wanted to have the opportunity to talk to you guys a little bit about my research and what this paper is actually about I've been a little bit hesitant to talk about exact specifics about my work because a lot of it isn't published And I just wanted to make sure that it was safe for me to talk about keep in mind that This is just a small component of my dissertation Generally papers that you publish are a single chapter of each component of your dissertation So my dissertation was composed of personal 
personally six chapters. Each of those results chapters could be its own paper. You do a lot of work for your entire PhD. This paper specifically is a very clinical paper, which I thought you guys would have a lot of interest in. It's very applicable to the human as opposed to just on the cellular level. The focus of my entire dissertation, what I've spent all of my graduate career working on is a protein called RAM, which stands for a receptor of hyaluronin mediated motility, which is a cell surface receptor that when it binds to hyaluronic acid in the extracellular matrix, it activates a signaling cascade that can trigger transcription and then translation of a lot of different things and it's overexpressed in cancer. Specifically, it's overexpressed in breast, prostate, cervical, lung, many different types of cancers, but no one's ever studied it before in ovarian cancer as far as the literature goes to date except for me. My whole project was on the overexpression of RAM in ovarian cancer. This paper specifically focuses on tissue from ovarian cancer patients and urine of ovarian cancer patients and I was able to find and show that there's an overexpression of RAM in ovarian cancer tissue as compared to normal. So when staining the ovarian surface epithelium of the cancer patients, I found intense stain in the cancer patients and not in my normal samples. Additionally, I was able to find an overexpression of RAM in the patient urine of cancer patients compared to normal. After their surgery or after cytoreductive surgery or debulking of the tumor, the expression of RAM in their urine actually decreased, which is in agreement with my data that the RAM is actually being secreted from the tumor. I have mentioned previously in a different video that I do have a patent for a biomarker screening test for a urinary RAM, possibly early detection screening, so it could be used to not only detect uh, ovarian cancer, but maybe to monitor disease after the patient has gone through surgery. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. That is what this paper is about, looking at the overexpression of RAM in tissue samples from actual patients, as well as looking at the overexpression of RAM in the patient urine. It's a little, little teaser, I guess, about what my dissertation is about, uh, the clinical component of my dissertation. So I hope that you enjoyed that. And if anyone in your family or if you know of anyone that has suffered from ovarian cancer, you know that it's an incredibly lethal disease. We don't have any reliable screening markers or screening tests for ovarian cancer, unfortunately. So that is a big thing that scientists in my field are working on. And yeah, so I hope that you enjoyed that. For my next meal, I'm going to be using these kelp noodles, which have amazing macros. They're a little bit different than the shirataki noodles that I'm sure that you've seen before, but I got these at Whole Foods. The macros are one carb, zero protein, and zero fat per serving. And there's four servings in this whole bag, so I'm just gonna cook this whole bag. So it's four carbs total to eat this whole thing. When you season it with sauce, it just takes on the flavor of the sauce. I'm also gonna add nori. It gives a really good flavor to dishes, so I'm just gonna crumple this up and put that in there. And I'm also gonna add, gonna add shrimp to this, so it's gonna be like a noodle shrimp dish. And I'm gonna season it with soy sauce, and also gonna add a little bit of ginger. This is like the ginger they ha they serve on the side of sushi when you get it. And you just kind of saute all of it in a saucepan. The noodles just kind of have to be heated up in the pan, and then you add the sauce, and then you add the protein of your choice. You don't have to use shrimp and then you just kind of stir it up and then you eat it and it's delicious. And then I'm gonna mix up some mixed vegetables as well. And then I'm gonna put this in a bowl with the nori and it's gonna be yummy. Asian cooking brought to you by Stephanie. Here is the finished product. This is the kelp noodles with some vegetables, that's ginger. And then here is the nori that I'm gonna mix in with it and some chopsticks. Also gonna top it with some sriracha. I'm just gonna have water with it sitting on my floor because I want to watch TV. So a huge tip that I have is that I go for things with really high volume that are not calorically dense. So in the bottom of this bowl, in addition to the vegetables, the noodles, and the nori, I also have some iceberg lettuce just to make it more voluminous. Uh, so, yes. All this water puts on rice. So we are watching food challenge. Matt Stoney eating 12 pounds of rice. Oh, God. This guy's a beast. Huh? After this, I'm gonna have some dessert. I'm gonna make something yummy. Okay, so I'm gonna make dessert, which is the best part. 
Oh, by the way, this is my Kendrick Lamar shirt that I got from going to see Kendrick Lamar and Travis Scott concert. If you want to see her drunk, go watch my vlog. <laughs> <laughs> we played a really fun You want to see me drunk. If you want to <laughs> see Jeff get wild, go watch that vlog. And it's we played a fun drinking game, so if you watch YouTube, you'll probably like it. So I'm going to make a variation of a mug cake or a microwavable cake. And I'm going to use snickerdoodle protein. And like I said, Jeff gets this for the free kind of discount. Tried it with other kinds of protein, doesn't work quite as well. This one works very well. I'm going to top it with apples, sugar-free apples, so it's only seven grams of carbs per serving, and then a scoop of vanilla Halo Top. I'm gonna do a scoop of protein and some cinnamon, so it's even more cinnamony. Then I do a quarter of a teaspoon, I think this is a teaspoon, yeah, quarter of a teaspoon of baking soda and baking powder. I think I'm going to do a scoop and a half of protein just so, because I want more. I want a bigger cake. I like cinnamon a lot. It'll go really well with the apples. And then I'm going to add some water. And I just kind of eyeball it to a certain consistency. And it's going to kind of bubble up because of the baking soda. And then based off of your microwave, um, I would just microwave it 30 seconds at a time. You don't want it to be overcooked. I like mine kind of soft in the center. Another 30. You kind of have to like take it out, let it rest for a second, and then, because it can be temperamental. Because mm. you're cooking with protein. So it looks like when it comes out, the center of it is kind of soft here, and then most of it on the outside is cooked. So I'm going to do one scoop of Halo Top, which is delicious, macro-friendly ice cream. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. The vanilla is very good. And I'm also going to do some apples. I got these at Walmart. Apples. Pop it with a little bit of and some sprinkles, because sprinkles make everything better. Voila. Looks so good. Oh, I should get your carrot cake and you should eat it with me. Yeah, that's a good idea. This most glorious, will it focus? Oh, this glorious oh, carrot me. cake. This is from my graduation <laughs> cake that my sister got me, and it is divine. He's gonna have that while I eat my dessert. Yours looks good too though. It does. It's sprinkles. Alright. Wait, comment below which one you'd rather eat. That? Well, <laughs> I wanted to, I bet you half your channel would rather that. This is delicious by the way. This has ice cream. This is actually really good. Alright guys, that's gonna conclude the video. That was delicious by the way. I really hope that you enjoyed this full day of eating. If you like full day of eating, like the video. Um, I will also have the workout linked below, but I also wanted to give another huge shout out to Squarespace for supporting this video. If you are interested in creating your own online store or your own website or having a space on the internet for you, you can go ahead and go to squarespace.com forward slash Buttermore and type in Buttermore as the code and you can get 10% off your first purchase. They have award-winning customer service if you ever get stuck or have any issues. It's an all-in-one platform that you can actually Actually create your own domain there as well designer templates it look everything looks super modern I just created my own website there myself and they help you create everything that you need if you have any issues with anything so if you're really interested in creating your own website Jeff uses it as well for his website it's a really great service so go ahead and check out the link in the description box to get your discount that's gonna conclude this video I will see you next time bye deleted scene <laughs> A little smaller. <laughs>